Hello everybody and welcome to a new series on the channel, Space Engineers. Designed for those of you who are starting out new in the game and want to know what to do and how to get started. We're going to be covering mostly the space startup and we'll go through quite a lot of things and hopefully it'll give you a bit of an insight into how to play the game and get yourself going. So before anything, before we get started, let's talk about whether you want to use a keyboard, your key bindings and whether you're going to be using a controller. Now, if you want to have a look into that, then if you go to your options setting here, you go to your control setting, and then you got your controller selection here. If you're using a controller, obviously I don't have a controller actually activated, so I don't have one in there. However, if you did have a controller, obviously that will drop there. And then you've got your scheme there, you've got your flight alternative or your classic. You can invert and stuff like that. So that's if you want to use a controller, and obviously you've got your same settings for your mouse here. You've got also, if you go into here, you can certainly see what each one of them does. So if you had, again, you know, separate settings on certain things, these will change whether you're using a mouse or keyboard or whether you're using a controller. So you can find out how to control your stuff there. However, we're using mouse and keyboard, so we're not going to deal with any of that. So let's get straight into how to start a game. I know a lot of you like to play, you play with a controller, so... You know, I'd like to cover that as well. Uh, here are some tutorials if you want to get yourself in with some of the tutorials that are in the in-game. However, most of what is in here we will cover through with our tutorial. So hopefully, if you want to use both, feel free. But you're here, so I'm presuming you're here for a reason. So let's get straight into that reason. Okay, starting a new game, you've got three options. You've got scenarios, you've got a workshop, and you've got a custom game. I don't want to go into too much about the other two here, the scenarios and workshop, but basically basically scenarios is a game that's already preset, so it's like a campaign style thing, but in the world of Space Engineers. Space Engineers is a sandbox game, so these scenarios just kind of make it a little bit finite, and that's the design for it. Um, I don't want to go into them too much. Workshop is basically the same as scenarios, however it's workshop created by other authors or people who I've got mods going and stuff like that. It's good once you get into the game, but I won't worry about these two first. The one we want is custom game. I'm not going to go too much into the other stuff, but just so you are aware, you've got various planet side things. So if you want just a single planet, you've got the alien planet. You've got an asteroid armor, which has got like stuff inside the asteroid. You've got a crash red ship, a dead drop arena, earth planet. You've got an empty world with absolutely nothing in it. A green station, lone survivor, which is, that's kind of a cool one. Uh, Mars planet, again, a planet of Mars. Moon base, where it's got a base that's already built on the moon. Pertum orbiter, where you've got like a space station out there. Uh, the red ship that's not been crashed. Rival platforms, you've got two sets of platforms that you can fight against, and you've got a full star system. All of these are kind of like the scenarios, but they are done with limitless stuff, so you can actually adjust things. You can also use creative mode on these, so for example, if you want... On an empty world, you can use creative and build just space stations in the middle of space and do stuff like that. You can also spawn stuff in on creative. But we want the star system. This is a little bit taxing for your system, so if you are struggling, you can do the same. But you can use one of these starter ones here, which has just got one station, uh, sorry, one planet on it, or one station, or something like that. That's another way you can get around it if you're struggling with FPS. We want, so we want star system. Call the name of whatever it is. So this is a beginner's guide. So beginner's star system. Description, if you want to give it a description. You know, I'm just going to copy that. I'm not playing creative. I'm playing survival. Creative is unlimited resources, instant building and no death. Survival, realistic management resources, realistic inventory capacity, death and respawn. Do you want to play online or not? You can play it offline, private, with friends, or the public. We're going to remain offline because obviously this is a beginner's guide. And you auto save, you want to kind of auto save it every five or ten minutes or so so you don't, you know, make a mistake and you have to restart the whole thing again. I want to quickly touch on mods. There's a large modding community for space engineers. Don't touch this until you start getting used to it. Once you do, you'll notice there are certain things you could do to kind of have a quality of life that the game didn't bring in. Things like increasing the speed cap, which makes massive difference. Uh, certainly when you're on a planet, whether you can gain atmosphere or not, it's done a lot easier if you can fly faster to begin with. And advanced is where we're going to have our configuration. So I want to go through quickly on these. Um, now, I generally have everything set as is now. However, when we're playing 
on multiplayer, so some of these are changed to 10 times uh, because you don't get to carry very much. But I like to have a little bit of a challenge when I'm playing these. So we're going to stick to these ones as we've got for now. So I'll have a quick glander over these. These are all things that you can change to make the gameplay feel a little bit different. Um, I'm going to keep the environment hostility to safe for now. Actually, no, I'm going to switch it to normal, so then we get uh, meteor shells and stuff, so I can show you what happens with them. Um, asteroids, whether they're infinite or not, they will, they're will they procedurally generated, so you can have them where there's nothing. Uh, you've got low density, so there's one spotted here, there, and everywhere. Or well, you've got high density, where they're absolutely everywhere. Uh, you can have realistic or arcade sound. I generally go for realistic. You can limit the world size. Again, if you're struggling with the uh, game playing, especially if you're playing with friends and stuff like that and your computer's not you know, managing it, you can limit how big the world is. And you can also limit how big your view distance is. It does the low-end machines, performance friendly, small performance hit, performance hit, and big performance hit. We'll just keep it smack bang in the middle. Respawn ship cooldown. That's basically whether um, you have a cooldown on your respawn ship. So if you die and you want to bring another respawn ship in, that cooldown will be effect. Don't worry too much about that. Sun rotation. Do you want a day or night cycle? Simple as that. How long is the day? How many small objects you have in the game? Things like when you weld and grind, if you grind off blocks, or if you have like an asteroid that you're mining and there's bits flying off, how many of them bits can actually be in the world? Again, performance can change that dramatically well so if you change that it'll change your performance dramatically animal npc limit is how many animal npcs there are in the world and um, you got a block limit that i recommend you keeping if you don't want to tax your pc too much max ship size you can um, limit the size of the ships that people can build max box per player again these are really for multiplayer uh, pcu is how many blocks so a block has a pcu cost um it's performance cost units and that'll um, reduce how many overall blocks you can have in the world backup saves how many backup saves it has so you can increase that so you can have multiple backup saves if you want to have the option to go back at different intervals you can do and then finally just just a few things that you want to change in here if you want to do it if you want a hardcore mode you can have permanent death i'm not going to go too much into the rest of them because these are well, they are pretty much self-explanatory but the things that you probably don't want to really worry about too much the only other one I do generally put in is in-game scripts once you're used to the game. Um, I, I'm going to do in-game scripts at some stage, so I will have that on there just in case. Um, unsupported stations by enabling this option, grids will no longer turn dynamic when disconnected from a static grid. Um, this I generally leave off. Um, is that the one that... Yes, so, so this one it is. I generally have it where it's left off for now. Uh, so you can switch between a station and not a station, and I'll show that later. Um, the other thing I do generally take off when I'm learning is to disable um, wolves, spiders, and drones. We're going to leave drones on for now. And um, actually, no, we're going to turn them off so we don't get too much worry, because they're basically just NPCs. You're not going to get anything from them. So we'll turn them off for now, just so that they're not going to bother us too much. And if you're a new player, obviously, you're going to have them off as well. Um various other things you can worry about later um whether system is nice to have on if you're if you again your pc struggling you can drop that down economy there is an economy system now again you can choose to turn that off if you wish to and obviously you have respawn ships if you really want them or if you want to take them out of the game completely you can just have a ship uh sorry a suit i wouldn't take that off as a new player so that's the settings. I'm only glancing through this. There isn't really much to worry about at this stage. The main thing is to just remove these three here because these are going to bother you whilst you're learning how to play the game. It takes you a lot longer to set up, so you want to have them off for now so that you're not affected by them. Then once you get into it and you kind of get used to it a little bit more, you want to turn some of these back on if you want a bit of a challenge. And obviously there's other things you can do as well to increase that challenge. So that's your basic settings, everything's set, so now we can just press start, and the world is going to get started. And this is where I'm going to now take you through some of the basics when you are in your ship, and hopefully we won't have too many issues. Okay, so when you first start, you are offered the respawn screen. You are technically not in the game yet. A couple of things to point out, you can have various drop pods. They'll give you a difficulty on how hard they are. Take note of these, they do actually 
generally represent how hard they really are. An Earth-like drop pod is very easy because you've got nothing to worry about. Survivability is generally not too bad. Mars is a little bit harder because you've got no oxygen. However, the gravity is quite similar, so you're not flying around like a lunatic. So Mars is a little bit easier. Titan has very low gravity and also has uh, no oxygen, so again, it's harder. And you can see the moon also is hard as well. Alien, again, you've got a little bit of oxygen. The gravity is a little bit heavier. And these things will affect some of the things you build as well, which is worth noting. So, for example, if you want to drive around on Titan, as soon as you go off the edge of a cliff, you're going to keep flying forever. And then when you land, it's going to damage you. So then you're going to think things like weight and uh, counterbalance and stuff like that. The one we're going to do is the space pod, which is a hard difficulty, uh, but it will cover all aspects of the gameplay as a new player. Um, certainly, like if you want to have a play around with stuff, so if, you know most of the things that you'll find on this one here, you can also find in the space pod as well. So I'm going to do this so that we can go through some details. So you click on that, you can hide your message of the day, which is not, you know it's neither here, there, or there. You can refresh the screen in case anybody puts down a medical bay, which we'll see later in the game. Or you can respawn to respawn in whatever you selected. Now, you remember the respawn timer? That's what these are down for. So if you had a respawn timer on, when I hit respawn, that would, time would then take effect for the space pod. So I couldn't just blow up and then come back and respawn another one quickly. Faction, we're not going to deal with too much because we won't have a faction. It's a single player for this one. Uh, however, we will cover that later down the line. So let's respawn again into our ship. Okay, so this is what you are introduced with when you spawn in. So, you can see an asteroid directly ahead of me, so we'll use the asteroid as kind of our marker. First things first, I want to talk about the view and the camera. Just some basic camera controls. V allows you to switch between first person and third person. I'm going to talk about the ship for now, but everything that we do, if I show you here also does the same thing for you as a person as well okay if you want to move it around for so free look you can free look as your head if you press the alt key and move your mouse around if you press v and hit the alt key you can do the same on the external ship however you're no longer using your head so you can have a look all the way around you can see the planet behind us there we already have made a beacon somewhere so you can position your camera to where you want if you want a more realistic gameplay style like i've said you can make things harder you can lock it into first person only which means you can't do that so if you haven't got the ability to do that by pressing the v key or you can't move things around using the alt key in the mouse then check to make sure you haven't got third person disabled okay if you are looking this way and you want to reset it if you press the v key and v key again you'll find yourself reset nicely back to where you are okay i'm going to stay in here because uh sorry stay in this view just so you can see what i'm about to explain next which is how to move our ship so we can see an asteroid directly ahead of us and you can see if i move my mouse it moves where i'm pointing the front end of my ship now make note where I'm pointing the front of my ship. Thrusters, W, A, S, and D, as you normally would. You can see them firing as I do it. So W is forward, S is backwards, A and D is your left and right. Roll is Q and E. So you can roll left for Q and roll right for E. But bear in mind you're in space, so things take a little bit of time to slow down because you've got inertia. Okay, so if you want to ascend, you press the space bar and you will go up. And you'll notice that the thruster above me lights up as soon as I stop pressing the space bar. More of that will become apparent shortly. And if I want to drop or descend, I press C. Again, if I jump out... Well, so if I pitch in your, it's obviously the mouse key. If I jump out very quickly, and I'm going to go outside my ship. Here we go. 
let all my oxygen out. Just slow the mouse down so I don't make you sick. And then I'm going to let go of this. Again, the spacebar lifts me up, the C key drops me down. Forward is W, back is S, A and D is obviously left and right. Look around, or pitching your is the mouse. And obviously I can also rotate or roll with the Q and E keys as well. You can see the legs are shaking. So all of the movements that you can do in the ship, you can also do as you're flying in your suit. Worth noting. I'm going to bring myself back in. I'll roll myself up. And then you can adjust yourself. It is quite sharp. These these are really quite powerful, these um, packs. I'll explain what I've done with everything else shortly. Don't worry about that. Okay. Inertial dampeners. So as I mentioned a moment ago, if I press the space bar, I go up and then my thruster at the top will ignites to slow me down. If I press the Z key, you'll notice that in the bottom left corner, there is now a big red triangle that says dampeners off. If I do that again, you'll notice that top thruster now doesn't engage. And you can see where my reticle is on the asteroid while going up. If I press C, I will slow myself down and then I'll start going lower. Again, if I drop it off, it's going to continue to do it. Generally, when you're a new player, you want to avoid turning your inertial dampeners off to begin with because they are lifesavers. If you have them off, you have to counter every single action you've done in order to go in the opposite direction. So, for example, to slow down, yes, you can use any front thrusters. If you don't have them, you have to turn your ship around and use your rear thrusters. But if you decide you want to go left, but you're moving forward, and you just turn and go, I want to go here now, your inertial dampener would stop you from moving that direction. And as you travel this way, it will adjust it and correct it for that. With the inertial dampeners off, it won't. So you'll actually be slightly traveling um, like a diagonal pace. So you'll be heading towards the asteroid still, but you'll be pointing away from it. Sometimes if you're get engaged in combat or if you're dealing with something or you're you know just distracted, you may forget that that's what the inertial dampeners are for and you'll end up hitting the asteroid damaging your ship. So it's worth noting that. Okay, so the other thing I want to just finish off before we start talking about the player rather than the ship is two other important things. One is the parking brake. If I press P, you'll hear it has an audible click, but you'll notice that my ship says unable to park. This ship doesn't have any landing gear. If it had a landing gear, it would enable the landing gear by default. Um, there is other blocks that you can use, and you can also um, assign the landing gear manually using your toolbar, which we'll go through in a minute. But that's explained later down the line, so don't worry about that. For now, if you want to whack a landing gear on the bottom of it and press the P, it'll lock it for you and you're parked. Press the P again, it'll unlock it. Happy days. And the final thing for the ship at this stage is the Y key. The Y key turns everything off. Your ship's now dead in space. If you didn't, if you had pressed Z, which is your dampeners, and we'll just turn the power back on, and I'm going forward, and then I forget, and I go, oh, it's okay, I'm done with what I want to do. I turn my power off. I have no inertial dampeners. If I turn them on, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't stop it, so it's too late. You need your power on, and your inertial dampeners now take effect. Just worth knowing that. The ship will always use power whilst your power is switched on. The only time that your power isn't used is when you physically switch it off. If you need to conserve power whilst you're doing stuff, if you've got low amounts of uh, hydrogen and stuff like that, which we'll talk about later in the guide, switching power off is sometimes a really good thing. However, be wary, it shuts down power to everything, including connectors. 
Connect is something we're going to talk about later, but it will also stop things like your engines providing oxygen for your ship. It will also prevent you from using your dampeners, as you just saw. It prevents everything. Everything is switched off. It's, you know, dead to the boards. So just bear that in mind. It's good for conserving power, but if you can afford to keep things running, I'd keep things running personally. So bear that in mind. Okay. Right. So let's move on to the person or the, the character and what you can do with the character and how you can interact with things. Okay, so we're now back in our first person view and you know we can look around. As mentioned, you can see our body underneath there. You can see everything's switched off, all the lights are switched off. We've only got basic light from the sun. If we switch our power back on, we now get a little bit of power. The screen comes up, looks lovely. Everything's going. Okay. So to interact with things, we press the F key. F key is the basic interaction key by default, unless you've changed it. Anything that you want to do with blocks or anything like that, if you press the F key, it will interact. Whilst looking at the survival kit, I will note that there are various other things you can do with other uh, blocks. Press K to open the terminal. Press I to open the inventory of the survival kit. There are various other things that other blocks do, but the basic use of an item is the F key. It will use block, it will open closed doors, you can enter and leave, um, hey, when does that, you can enter and leave the doors, uh, sorry, the, the chairs and stuff like that, it, that's your general F key, see, open and close the door. Okay. W, A, S, and D, as I mentioned, is your walk around. If you want to do what I've been doing, I'll just, uh, shut that so we can serve the oxygen. So now we're out in space. As you can see, I'm not floating off anywhere, and I walk, and as you saw before, as I walked here, it tries to go around the edge of it, and I can actually walk on the bottom of my ship. If you want to prevent that and you want to use your jump pack like I did earlier, if you press the X key, you'll now notice you're kind of floating off the ground. And if you can just see there, you'll notice our boots are yellow. If I press the X key, you notice the guy and I go to this whitey blue color, yellow, when I press the X again, X means that they are disengaged, which means I can now use my thruster pack to float myself around like a rag doll. And you'll fly into things rather than on things. Now, you'll also notice that my mag boots now no longer glow yellow. Like any connectors, when things glow yellow, like so, they are ready to operate. Press X and the mag boots will lock onto any surface. What do I mean by that? Well, if we shoot over to this asteroid here, again, we have additional dampeners for our character as well, which is worth noting. You can turn them off for your character. You don't want to do that because you'll hit it and you'll die. If we go over here like so, and I press uh, drop down, there we go, you can see they're now yellow, press the X, I can now walk on the surface of the asteroid. Oh, it's a bit wobbly. And you notice our respawn ship is over there. While we're here, we'll talk about a few other bits and pieces as well. They will, they will stick to any surface. Our thrusters use hydrogen, the H2 meter on the bottom left, which I will um, go over in a moment. You can... Obviously, as I mentioned, you can do the roll and you can do the ascent, descent. Now, if you are on the surface, you can jump. Now, obviously, bear in mind, we are currently in space. So if you jump, you lose connection to your mag boots and you have to reconnect. But C will also crouch you like so. You have a helmet, which if I open up out in space, it starts to die because you have no oxygen. You have lights on your suit. So now we can see the asteroid. Well, that looks pretty. So your helmet is J. It opens and he starts to die. Press J again to close it. And your lights are the L key. Right, let's head on over back to our respawn ship. And we'll discuss the next part of it. I don't want to go too fast towards the respawn ship. Because I don't want to crash into it, which is quite easy to do. Here we go. 
Now, I do tend to find that third-person mode can be a little bit easier to move around um, stuff sometimes. Like, for example, trying to get connections and stuff. There we go. All right, let's go inside into our warmer environment. Let's heal ourselves by pressing the F key on our survival kit. You can see our health is going up in the bottom left. Okay, so let's talk about the HUD. Right, if I press my tab key, you'll see I get three options. The third option is clear screen. Nice to take some pictures. If you want to take pictures, you can um, do the same in third person. Um, if you press your alt key like this, you can really get some great pictures. So you can do that. Your initial one is full detail. Press it again and you lose all the shortcut keys. A little bit cleaner for those who are used to it and want to get rid of all the keys. When you're beginning though, keep everything on and it keeps you in. Also, it'll remind you if you need to press that Z key for your initial dampener. Okay, so you got full HUD, no levels and off. Now, we have meters. So, starting from the left. The J was your helmet. When it's lit up, your helmet is closed. X is your mag boots. Like this is, they are activated. When you are using your jump pack, it switches picture to a jump pack. If you are on, an, on a planet that has no um, astro, uh, sorry, no um, no gravity, then you will use your jump pack. However, if you're on an Earth like, then that will just switch off, and you can just walk around like normal. Uh, your O is a signal a detector or a signal radar. We'll not worry about that at the moment, we'll go into that later. And L is your lights again, on or off for on or off. You then have, directly below that, the health meter, which you saw rising when we used the survival kit. If you missed it, feel free to roll back and have a look at that. You have the O2 meter, your oxygen meter, your most important resource in the game. You then have power. This is your suit power. I'll show you what it's like on the ship in a minute. And then you have your hydrogen. Your hydrogen is a mixture of um, ice, which is used for oxygen, which you can use um, a machine to break, it, break down into hydrogen. Um, hydrogen is your probably your most used resource, only second to oxygen whilst you're in space. If you're on a planet, hydrogen is used far more than oxygen is. You then have your speed, which is in meters a second. You saw it goes up and down. You can walk at six meters, and I've just launched myself through the glass. I didn't know there was no glass there. Apparently, okay, that was different. That Things like that can happen. Don't worry too much. Don't panic. Just be worried. It does happen. However, it's sealed because you can tell from the sound. I don't know what happened there, but that was fun. So yeah, so you get 6 metres a second for walking. Um, obviously, things change as you're flying ships or flying around with your jetpack. You've already seen that in action when we've been moving around. You then have your dampeners. Your dampeners, big red if they're off. Don't forget that. We then have the toolbars. You can press Control and a number. Numbers 1 through 9. As you can see, the shortcut key is just underneath it there. The N and T are for building blocks, and then you have press number again to switch sides, which is again for a building block. You can see that if I press it twice, it switches, and you can see it also highlights at the bottom as well to let you know which one you're activating. And you can do the same again. Press zero, and it empties your hand. So you have keys one to nine, and you can put anything on these. We will go through the toolbars at a later stage when we're actually building stuff. Right now, it's just a quick glance. Your main toolbar will have generally your gears, uh, your equipment on it, your tools, and it'll also have some basic components on there as well. You can always see which one you're on by which number is highlighted. The next thing we have is the A gravity and P gravity. The A gravity and P gravity is your artificial gravity and your planetary gravity. You also have underneath there, you'll see I have O2 high, warm. That is your temperature reading. We're in an O2 environment because we have this here pumping O2 into this little cockpit area here, which is sealed, and it's providing us with oxygen. So we have high oxygen. It also creates heat as well as a byproduct. 
so you have a warm area. If we go out, outside, you'll notice that once the oxygen is expelled or we step outside, we have no O2 and we are freezing. That means that it's using more suit power to keep you alive because the atmosphere outside is freezing. You notice our suit's already dropped down to 90%. Because it's dropping down to 89 there. If we go back in, you'll notice that the speed at which the suit now drops already has slowed down. You can tell because we've dropped from like 90% to 89 just as we stepped out there. If you want to recharge your suit, you can jump into anything that's powered and it will automatically charge your suit as a byproduct. Survival kit is one of them. If I use it, it will charge my suit. If I sit in a chair, it will also charge my suit. Generally, if you're going to log off, I'd log off in a chamber or a suit, or ch sorry, in a chair or something like that, just so your suit stays active, so it keeps you alive. Okay. So the next thing is the graviting heading ball. So the thing directly to the right of the A gravity and P gravity is your heading. The cross that appears on it that you see there, like that, you'll notice it moves from left to right. That there is the direction according to where you're looking it's the direction you're going so if we jump in the pilot seat and we turn our inertial dampeners off and we go diagonally you'll notice we're going to crash into that asteroid so let's not crash into the asteroid notice how the crosshair has just gone off right if we launch ourselves forward we see we're going directly forward. If we start going up, we're now going forward and up. If I now move to the right slightly, you'll see we're kind of going in a diagonal position. You can see that unknown signal. If we turn around, see how that crosser moves? You can see how we're moving away from that there. If I do that, it slows us down. And the big cross goes off. So you can tell which direction you're going. Okay. So the next thing we have is on the right-hand side. The three little markers above. P is for your parking. You can see that we don't have that when we're actually out of the ship. So we have to be in the ship to see it. O is for the beacon that the ship has. And Y is the ship's power. Next thing down from there is the weight. The weight of the ship. This game does try to use physics as much as possible, so bear that in mind. You then have your remaining power in time, and you have your power consumption. Obviously, it's recharging batteries, so the power consumption is never zero all the time. The only time it does that is when I turn the power off. And finally, is your, fire, is your remaining hydrogen for your ship. You have ship hydrogen and you have player hydrogen. Obviously, we need to collect resources to recharge our hydrogen, which we'll go through at a later stage. Right, so that's the basics of Space Engineers. From there, we should be able to fly around and do whatever we need to do. However, there's a lot more that is coming later down the line. So hopefully this has given you an insight into how to get going, how to get started, and actually how to move around, move your camera around, get in and out of your ship, and start to do things. And experimenting. One thing I would tell you not to do when you're experimenting is experiment with a grinder. Uh, certainly with the exterior of your ship. Because if you smash this open, you break the seal of the cockpit. And all of your lovely oxygen is vented out into space. And you're pretty screwed from that point onwards. However, there are various things you can do from this stage. And we'll go through that at a later stage. But for now... That's going to be us for this episode. Remember to hit that thumbs up if you have enjoyed it, if it's given you a little bit of an insight into Space Engineers. Hit any comments that you uh, would like. If you've got anything that you need any help with, then feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Hit that bell notification to be notified if you are looking for more videos on Space Engineers, then also make sure you subscribe as well. But until next time, everybody, take care for now, and I shall see you all on the next one. Bye-bye for now.